Hey and welcome back to a new video. About two weeks ago, Aaron reached out to me, who is a viewer, and he was running this RTX 4090 Tough for quite a long time without any issues. A year ago, he added this wire view to his system. And then suddenly, a couple of weeks ago, he was starting to see issues with his system. Like random black screens, shutdowns, and then after a couple of reboots, the card was not detected anymore at all. And then checking the wire view, he saw that it was reading zero watts. Normally, when you're booting up the system, it would show like 20 or 30 watts during the boot phase, but here it was showing zero watts. Then he was cycling through and he could see that 12 volt was present, at least some voltage, but it was pulling zero amps and zero watts. Then he decided to shut down the system and to analyze what the problem is. He was running this card attached to a Corsair, a 1000 watt PSU. This is also the Corsair cable, I assume. And yeah, when he removed the cable, he could do so, but when he tried to remove the wire view, he couldn't. Which, yeah, seems like we have another melted case of a connector. And, and, and I think in this case, it's actually quite nice because the wire view is still attached. It's probably still fully melted into the connector, which should give us the opportunity again to measure some contact resistances and then in the end, hopefully replace this connector and return a working card to him. You're looking for a serious GPU power at an unbeatable price? Check out Hetzner's dedicated GPU servers. The GEX44 features an NVIDIA RTX 4000 SFF ADA GPU with 20GB of ECC GDDR6 VRAM, perfect for running pre-trained AI models. You need even more performance, and then you should take a look at a GEX130, equipped with NVIDIA's RTX 6000 ADA GPU offering 48GB of VRAM. And this one is ideal for training complex AI models. And the best part, the GEX130 comes with no setup fee and both servers are built by the hour. Both options are dedicated servers, meaning you're not sharing any resources. Find out more information about Hetzner's GPU servers in the description below. He sent the card including the cable, which I think is not part of the issue here. And I think it's, it's a Corsair cable, at least from the looks, and I think also this. It looks very familiar and also very similar to the cables that I have used in the past with some of the Corsair PSUs. And because I know how the wire view is built, that is why I don't think this was part of the problem. For this, we're just looking at this wire view pro, but all of the wire views, they're generally built the same. So we have the PSU side that is connected over a cable, and then you have the GPU side. And we are using quite a special connector on the GPU side. As you can see, it has a solid metal bar on one side and also a solid metal bar on the other side. So on this side right here, this would be the ground side, this is the 12 volt side. And since all of the pins here are like bridged, connected together, it just won't matter what comes from here. Like if there's a current imbalance here, it wouldn't matter for this connector because everything else would just be connected again on the GPU connector side. These kind of cases with Wireview, and this is obviously not the first case, also disproves NVIDIA's false claims. Because NVIDIA was spreading the information that melting connectors cannot happen as long as you use the NVIDIA connector, because the NVIDIA connector is bridging 12 volt and ground in, like, on top of the connector prior to the individual pins. And that's exactly the same thing as what is done here. But this will not save you, because obviously at the point of bridging, you will have the same current, but you still have the individual 12 pins, well, six times 12 volts, six times ground, that are then connected to the card, where you can have a current imbalance. So that just kind of disproves um, the claims that NVIDIA was spreading. What I want to do now is disassemble the card, at least partially, so we can access the pins from the backside, because then we should be able to attach the multimeter to the 12 volt side of the wire view, and then also measure the resistance from the back side of the PCB. I'm also pretty sure that the card has never been opened. You can see the seal is still there. So I'm also, yeah, I'm pretty sure that Aaron didn't do anything wrong. It's definitely not his fault. Now that the cooler is gone, we can inspect this in more detail. I first wanted to check if it was fully plugged, which it definitely seems to be the case. I couldn't spot any like huge gap in between the connector and the wire view. The only thing I noticed is that the wire view is slightly bent, which I think is, yeah, unfortunately a bit of a transport damage because I could also see a little bit of a dent of an imprint in the box it came in. So I think that was due to transportation, but Apart from that, everything else looks kind of okay. Actually, I think the transport damage is bigger than I expected. Look at the sense pins that are bent. Also, if you look from the left, you 
can see a crack in the plastic housing of the connector on the GPU side. Yeah, that's a bit unfortunate. I still hope that we can, well, we can definitely still measure it, but I'm not sure how reliable the information will be. One more thing I noticed is that if you pay now attention to the plastic on the wire view side, like very close, maybe like in this angle, very close to the GPU connector, there is a slight deformation on left and right, which could indicate that a left and right side of the connector at least partially melted. And one more detail, since this is a 4090, it also seems to be an older 4090 because you can see the H plus marking on the connector. So it's not the latest type, which would be H plus plus with the adjusted pin length. So that was not the case here. We are again using my milliometer, which is a high precision measurement device for just very small resistances. That's also the reason why this is using a four wire technique. So you have two additional wires that you wouldn't have to, like on a simple multimeter because having two wires on each side, the device, the milliometer itself can compensate, can measure the internal resistance of these wires themselves and then deduct them so you can only measure precisely what you actually want to know. It's a bit tricky to do, that's why I have to put the camera on a mount. And I added the first clamp on the wire view side and now I'm trying to reach these pins with the other clamp from yeah, the, the side from the GPU, from the front side, I probably will have to cut the, the sense pins right here to access the rest. So we'll just try one pin first. And here we have 176 milliohms, which is actually quite a lot. And on the second one, we have 147, which is, again, actually quite a lot. I'm trying to get to the one all on the far right, also 177. On the second from the right, there is no connection at all. Probably because this one melted. But now to access the two in the center, I will have to kind of remove the sense pins or just cut them, bend them away a little bit. Otherwise I just have no chance of accessing this. But the, I mean, the sense pins don't really matter for what we're doing. Finally, a chance to use high precision cutting tools again. And with this, we have more space, more clearance. Third pin from the left measures about 110 milliohms, and the third from the right about 105 milliohms. And just to double check, I also measured the other pins again that we already had measured, and it's in, still in a similar range. As you can see, the one on the left, I think we previously had like 165 or 170, but it's, it's still in the same range, in a range that is way too high. And honestly, I'm not sure how realistic those values are. I mean, it's, I use, you can see it, it's, it's just measuring this, so this is what I get. But you have to keep in mind that it melted. So probably the, just the contact is much worse than it was in the original state, so I'm currently not quite sure how helpful this actually is what we're doing right here. Again, I'm not quite sure how helpful this information is because it's probably in the melted state, so things physically changed and thus it's, you know, the results are the results, but I'm not sure what to, to take from there. What I will do is get just uh, probably other 4090 or 5090, attach a wire view and give you some comparison values. So we, we see what's actually expected because I think the values are in general just way too high and um, also very inconsistent. And also you, you see something like 170 milliohms and 50 milliohms that is far outside from what I would actually expect. So yeah, I'm not sure what to take from this, but yeah, results are results. So for comparison, we're taking this 5090 Astral, which is fully functioning and also the wire view. And then we'll just see what kind of values are normal. We also, again, can't reach all of the pins because of the sense pins, but I think just the one on the far left and far right should be enough. So that's actually expected on the far left, 1.2 milliohms. And that's the far right one. It's again, very low, also kind of similar, 1.26 milliohms. So something is definitely not right here on Aaron's card. And I think at this point, I will just try to remove the connector, desolder it, unsolder it. I will try to keep the wire view on at the same time, which might be a challenge. Might be that the connector will melt. I'll just try. 
Unfortunately, I couldn't film the process because I needed both hands for it. And you can see that I, yeah, I melted the connector quite a bit with the hot air gun, but at least I was able to remove it. And now I also have the original connector removed, cleaned, so I can add the new one. Now added the new connector, just heating up and then soldering the new one on. And now I'm done with that. Now I just have to remove all the flux residues. And also quick check on the front side of the PCB. You can see the solder reaching all the way up through the hole. So all of that looks good. And before I start reassembling the card, quick check from ground to 12 volt measuring that just to avoid that I have any short or anything like that, but it's measuring seven kilo ohms, increasing to eight kilo ohms. So that should be good. Now I'm just giving Aaron also new thermal pads, so I'm replacing the original ones, the one in the center for memory are 2 millimeters, and the smaller ones for the VRM are 2.5 millimeters. just replacing these with our new Minus Pad Advance, pretty good all-rounder when it comes to price performance. And on the GPU, he's getting a phase change pad just for longevity and also good temperatures. And if this one is a bit too big, like in this case, you can just cut it a little bit to size, but if it's overlapping a little bit, that's absolutely no problem. And it's pretty common that you can just tear off one corner or something like that, but as long as this is not an uh, important area like a GPU, like there's nothing important, so we can just neglect that. It doesn't have to be beautiful, it just has to work. The remaining pads I will add on the cooler side. But in the end, the most important thing will be, does the card still work? I hope so. So I put it in the system. Let's test it. Fans are spinning, wire view is displaying um, expected power draw, and we have a display signal. Very nice. So far, everything looks great. I also checked temperatures and everything in idle, which looked okay. And now I'm running 3D Mark Speedway to just check performance and also temperature under load. And that's just about in line. Now, just to be safe, I ran the Speedway for one hour in the loop test and everything looks as expected. Clock, GPU temperature 62, 63, hotspot is about 70, so the delta here is great. Memory temperature 76, everything in an expected range, no crashes, performance is also in line. And with this, the card is ready to be shipped back to Aaron. I will also add a new wire view. I also want to thank NVIDIA for the endless content loop around 12 volt high power, even though it's still annoying. And it's just sad that there is no reliable or like 100% reliable solution. About this, because it's still like sticking together, I have an idea how I want to kind of check on this, analyze this further, but I still have to, I have to do some research before I can do that and then probably do a follow-up video. All right, thanks for tuning in, till next time, bye-bye.